Well, what's going on, everybody? My name is Matt Carter, and welcome to the show, episode number 82, right here on Shaw TV. And I've already thrown my pen down in the intro. And now, forget my pen, our musical guest uh, on today's episode, uh, perhaps the biggest name we've ever had on the show. Very, very excited. Her name is not Bob Dylan. It's not John Mellencamp. It's not Tom Cochran. It's not Dwight Yoakam. But she has toured with all of them. From the Comox Valley, Juno Award winner Sue Medley is here, along with Jeff Gillespie, also tickling the strings there from the band. We're going to hear a couple songs uh, from Sue's new album, The these are the days over the course of the next hour. I get to have a chat with her as well. Really looking forward to that. Also on today's show, we're taking a look at henna art. Uh, henna, by one definition, is actually a, uh, a natural dye used to color hair for about 6,000 years. That is, if Wikipedia is to be believed. But it's also used to create ornate tattoos and body art. And it sort of exploded from its original popularity in Northern Africa and the Middle East to, well, right here in Nanaimo today. So, really stoked. Anna Bosa is going to find out more about henna art from uh, Eva Crab, a wonderful artist who works in all types of mediums. Now, as the Christmas holidays descend quickly upon us, just like I descend quickly on the nearest mug of eggnog, we like to turn our attention to toys, of course, and toys for the less fortunate. So we're going to take a look at the Great Nanaimo Toy Drive, which actually provided toys for more than 1,600 children last year, and they are looking for your help once again this Christmas. Find out how when Brian sits down with Carolyn and Joanne and talks Toy Drive. Now on that same uh, same tip, we're also going to talk about a toy clothing and food drive concert that's being put together by the local hip hop community. Very cool stuff, and that's in support of the Nimo Loaves and Fishes as well as the Salvation Army's Hamperville program. It's hip hop's toys for the tots. It's going to feature rap, 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 rhymes for days as they're getting get, 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 gifts for the holidays over at the Camby. That's taking place on December 13th at the Camby. Again, uh, Brian, he's going to sit down with the event organizer Tyler Barnes and find out more about that. Now, our resident magician, um, Michael Behrens, we all know he's really magical, but do we know if he's really flexible? Well, he's gonna find out as he gets down with the very entertaining Stephanie Green from Omtown Yoga, and they're gonna try a little bit of yoga out, and we'll try to find out if yoga is indeed that one activity where you actually want to be a poser. Yoga, poser, all right, Todd likes that one. Next, we're gonna throw our attention toward the Alberni Valley and the McLean Mill Festival of Christmas Lights. Now, the McLean Mill is actually a national historic site, and they actually have their own steam train that runs all the way out there. And I kind of figured the train must run by a mill because the conductor is always saying, all aboard. All aboard, mill, mill. All right, before I board you anymore, I'll let you know that Anna's gonna find out more about the events from Neil Malbin, who's the manager of the McLean Hill Mill National Historic Site. But first, uh, Lewis Beck, he's gonna introduce us to an organization that enables young people to engage in international community development, uh, develop leadership skills, and much, much more, as well as um, embrace and learn about different cultures from around the world. And I think we are gonna agree that embracing different cultures is a positive thing, and so is eggnog a very positive thing. So grab yourself a mug, sit on down. You're watching the show right here on Shaw TV. Thank you very much, Matt. And uh, welcome, Simon Schachner and Adit Rathrobun. Yes, thank you. You are project supervisors, I believe, with Canada World Youth. Is that true? That's right. That's correct. <laughs> Simon, could you talk a little bit about Canada World Youth? What does it stand for? What's it, why does it exist? Okay, so Canada World Youth, it's an NGO based in Montreal, been around for 43 years. Uh, it specializes in uh, experiential education for young people. Uh, it's it does uh, programs that usually take th uh, place for three months in a Canadian community and three months in, a, in another country with youth from both countries. Our group in Nanaimo is actually made up half of uh, Indonesians, so there's 10 folks here from Indonesia, at it included, mm -hmm. and uh, 10 from right across Canada. And we're here to engage in uh, different uh, community activities, a lot of volunteering, uh, learning together, we have educational days uh, together. And the reason we do this really is to build youth leadership, uh, uh, skills training, and uh, for youth to become uh, future leaders in their own community. And it's a very powerful program, as you can imagine, taking uh, people from very far off different places and putting them to live together. There, there's just a lot of learning that happens. That's awesome, Simon. Uh, Adam, I'd like to ask you about this particular contingent of youth. Could you talk about them? Like, where are they from and what are they doing in Canada? What will they do where they go overseas? Yeah, absolutely. This is a very energetic, very exciting, very youthful people uh, uh, that are coming from all around Canada and all around Indonesia. So 
uh, 10 of us, us included, we come here and then we are paired into uh, what we call counterparts. And here we will live in, in host families, so we are totally immersed in Canadian families and cultures and everything that is Canadian. Uh, we will stay here for three months and we are being placed in non-profit organizations here for three months. And then after three months, we go to Indonesia, the whole uh, 20 of us, we go to Indonesia and do similar things there, being placed in host Indonesian host families and then uh, uh, work in non-profit organizations there and also live there for about roughly three months. Uh, we will stay in uh, what the island is called Pulau Kelapa and it is about two hours of boat, boat ride from, from Jakarta, up north of Jakarta. So it's exciting time for us. That's very, very exciting. Yes. Well, there's a contingent of youth here right now. And, yes, uh, some of us. I believe yeah. that they're going to be doing a little dance. Can you talk about the dance they're going to be doing? Uh, this first dance it will be uh, called Orlape, and this is actually a dance from my area, from Maluku province. That's to the east of Indonesia, just close to Papua. And this dance is... That was wonderful. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, Ava. Hi. This is Ava Crabb from Full Circle Creative, and as you can tell, she's been working on me. She is an artist of all sorts, and she is absolutely wonderful. She has been doing this great henna art on me, and it's incredible. Thank you. Can you tell me a little bit? I know that. <laughs> Matt explained a little bit about the history of henna earlier. Yeah. And how did you get into doing henna art? Um, actually, my friend Alina is the events coordinator for the theater festival, and she asked me to run a henna booth this summer. Okay. So I practiced at markets and all my friends. And well, you're amazing. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Now. Hannah, explain to me a little bit how the henna actually works. Sure. Because it almost looks like it's 3D right now, but when you look at yours, it's not 3D anymore. No. So how's that going to happen? Yeah, so <laughs> henna traditionally is made out of um, a leaf of a plant, and they dry okay, it up natural. and ground it up into powder, <clears throat> and then they add lemon and water and essential oils, and it creates like a paste. And when you put it on your skin, the dye seeps into your skin layers. Okay. And then it, uh, when it dries, it crumbles off, and then okay. it oxidizes. So it takes up to 48 hours for the true colors to 
show. So And it's totally natural. Totally natural. And yeah. it's not piercing my skin either. No, nope, doesn't hurt. Now, how long will this last? Uh, it can last up to like two weeks, maybe three. It depends on where you get it on your body. Okay. Like if you wash your hands a lot, it won't oh, last darn. quite as long. <laughs> It'll still last up a, a couple weeks, so yeah. Wow, well, that's yeah. that's pretty great. And of it, you're an artist yes. of all sorts. <laughs> I really like that. Thank you. Now, what else do you do other than your fabulous hand art? Um, uh, I'm a jewelry designer, so I teach oh, wow. jewelry workshops and I sell at the markets and things like that. And painting, drawing, a lot of carving. Great. Yeah. Now, explain what you're going to be doing here. So, <laughs> here I'm just doing a traditional Indian style henna. So, it's a lot of floral vines, and I'll be right. going up your arm. and. Um, wow. Yeah. It's really, really beautiful. And you just squeeze it out of the little tube like that. Yeah, it comes in it comes in cones or powder that you can mix yourself. And can anyone just buy this and Yeah, you can just buy the mind cones. You, if you're an artist it would look way better, obviously. Well <laughs> depends on your style, but yeah. And I kinda smudged I think. Oh. <laughs> look what I Let's did. touch that up a little bit. That's good. Wow, go. that's really beautiful. Oh my goodness. Now you're going to continue on mm -hmm. and you're going to go up a little bit further. Yeah, right? I'm going to okay. keep on going. Keep on going. Yeah. Now, full circle, pardon me, full circle creative. Yep. Can you tell me a little bit about full circle creative? Um, sure. My spouse, Ryan, and I, and my business partner, Aaron, opened it up in October and it's a workshop studio where we offer. Um, art classes taught by local artists. Oh wow. So we bring in, I'm from Gabriola, so we uh, bring in local Gabriolan artists to do um, up, upcycled crafts, jewelry, um, any performance arts, painting, drawing, all sorts of things. Wow, you do it all. Yeah, we, oh, try. You, yeah. we try to have yeah. variety for all ages, all uh, skill level. Now, we are going to come back because sure. uh, Ava's going to continue on with this. And we are going to go over to Brian on the main set. Thanks, Anna. And I have with me today a couple of people from the great Nanaimo Toy Drive, Carolyn Isles, Hi. Joanne Rowland. Uh, can you tell me, ladies, a little bit about the history of the Great Nanaimo Toy Drive. Sure. It started about 32 years ago when Dorothy Gasperdoni asked one of her children's friends, so what did you get for Christmas? And the child responded, we didn't get anything for Christmas. And Dorothy decided that wasn't going to be a part of her community. So she gathered her friends, she asked the people at the then Nanaimo Corrections and the fire department if they would help. And so 32 years we've been as a group of people encouraging the citizens of Nanaimo to donate toys for children who might not otherwise have a toy for Christmas. And this, uh, and Matt mentioned earlier, there's been like last year you had, you serviced over, how many families was it? It was over 800 families, and that's almost 1,600 children. And we're very, very pleased that we're only able to do that, and we're pleased that we're able to do that, through the generosity of the people of Nanaimo. The families, the businesses, the individuals, and all we ask is that they donate toys for children between newborn and 16, and that then that is their part, and we'll make sure that they are distributed to the families in need. Good, now, to obviously run this whole event, there takes a number of volunteers and a lot of bodies, so Joanne, can you tell us a little bit about that? I sure can. We have two volunteer activities that we require volunteers for. One of them is to actually set up on the tables for the parents so they can come in and select the toys for the children. Uh, we have uh, we have volunteers who come in and do three days of setup of all the toys that are donated. And then we have volunteers who come in and each one of them is assigned to a single parent. And on distribution days, that parent gets to come in and shop for their children. And it's a wonderful experience. And uh, as I say, I still need volunteers. So if anybody is interested, they can go to our website, which is the great Nanaimo toy drive .ca, and you'll find Find my telephone number there. You can give me a call and I'll be happy to talk to you about coming and volunteering to help us out. Carolyn, you're coming upon a couple key dates for families to get registered 
to receive the benefits of the toy drive. That's right. For the rest of this week, that's up until Saturday, which I think is November 28th, right. we are registering at Harewood Mall between the Subway and the Starbucks at, from 10 to 4. And we encourage families that might not have on any other way of providing toys for their children to come in, bring their IDs for their children, care cards are good, and themselves, and we will register you. The other option is if you miss those dates, if you can't make it this week, on the 18th and the 19th, uh, you can come to the Harewood School Gym and register right there. Good. Now, how do people who have want to help and get involved in this program, how do they get the toys to you? There's a number of sites around the city? Yes, they're all around the city. Yes, they are. And you can go to the Toy Drive website again, that's the great Nanaimo toy, toydrive.ca. But the fire halls, most malls, uh, coastal credit unions, Save On More, all of these places are places you can drop off toys. And we have people that will go out and pick them up. Well, that sounds like something that it's, it's certainly something in the Christmas spirit. I'm glad that there's something right here in Nanaimo that's really generating all of this for the kids of Nanaimo. Um, again, that website is listed on screen and uh, you can get the contact numbers for both of these ladies on that site. Um, it's, it's something that we should all get involved in. And uh, again, the great Nanaimo toy drive .ca, uh, It's just great Nanaimo toy drive .ca. This is a lot of groups getting involved. So certainly get involved, get registered, look up the site and see how you can participate in this. Let's head over to uh, Michael, who's gonna do some yoga. Hey, welcome to the show. Uh, you know, we are approaching the holiday season and uh, I don't know about you, but I get pretty stressed with all the traffic changes and all of the other stuff, stores, it gets busy, gets a little crazy, a little stressful. And today I have a very special guest. Her name is Stephanie Green. She's here from Hometown Yoga and she's gonna teach us how to de-stress a little bit. What's the best way to de-stress at this stressful time? Absolutely, so one of the most effective things and accessible things you have to manage your stress is awareness of your breath. So in yoga, we call it pranayama. Pranayama is um, like your life force, the breath, it is, and it's an extension of that life force. So, so, it's, so it's breathing. Breathing, yeah. So and by proper breathing can de-stress me. Proper breathing can change your life. Oh, really? Absolutely. All right. Really? I'm in. Show me. Okay. Show me. So you're going to stand with your feet underneath your hips. Okay. And take a moment just to ground your feet down. Stand nice and tall. Allow your shoulders to roll up and back. Up and back. Yeah, you can close your eyes. You can land a hand at your heart and a hand at your belly. Okay. okay. So allow yourself to let go of external distractions. We're going to come into what we call a three-part breath. You're going to inhale and exhale through your nose. So what you'll do is you'll take a deep inhale through the nose. You'll take that breath and imagine filling it up into your belly. Belly first, okay. And then expanding out into your ribs. Lift up and fill your chest. Exhale, chest falls. Ribs draw in, belly up and back. Again, inhale, breath comes into the belly. Ode into the ribs, lifts into the chest. Exhale, chest falls. Ribs come in, belly up and back. Wow, I'm de-stressed already. Awesome, <laughs> good. That's great. Yeah, so you That's can, great. absolutely, you can do that uh, anywhere. So if you're at a Christmas party, if you're shopping, whatever's stressing you out, you don't even have to put a hand on heart and hand on belly. You can just stand there and breathe. Really? Yep. Wow, that's simple, simple stuff. Yeah. Simple stuff. Is there any more? Are there any other breathing exercises that uh, we can use? Definitely. There's one more that I'd love to share with you. It's uh, kind of a fun one. It's called Lion's Breath. Uh oh. Lion's Breath. It's a little, it's a little more fiery. <laughs> is it okay? A little more fiery. Uh, so this is a good one to not only let go of tension, yeah. release tension through the jaw and through the throat. Um, if you're in a busy lineup, this might actually get you to the front of the lineup a little bit quicker. I'm all for that. I don't do lineups well, so. All right, okay. Okay. So you come up, you're going to take your elbows and line with the shoulders, spread your hands, so it's a pretty fierce. Okay. You ready? You're going to take a deep inhale. Yeah. As you exhale, stick out your tongue. <sighs> yeah. That's <laughs> One more the time. lion. Yeah. <laughs> inhale. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, right? That's good. That's good. I feel powerful now. Powerful. Rawr. You might freak some people out, you know, <laughs> dodge that lineup. And it right also... On. Makes you laugh, which is and we're funny. laughing. 
Yeah. That's awesome. And you said that there's other things we can do for laughter that uh, that uh, can de-stress us. Absolutely. What are we doing? Laughter. Uh, so acro yoga is something that we teach at the studio. Like acrobatic yoga. Acrobatic yoga. It's Perfect. a blend of acrobatics, yoga, and Thai massage. Yeah. And um, it's a great way just to play. Just to play. All right, I'm, I'm in. What are we ready? doing? I'm going to get you to fly. Are you ready to fly? Oh, I'm so ready. So ready to fly? Oh, Yo, okay. totally ready. Okay, you're going to get on my feet. Okay, maybe I'm not ready to fly. Am I ready? You're, I'm, you're I'm, so yeah, ready. You can I'm ready. All right, I'm going to take my feet up. You're going to bring your hips towards my feet. Okay. I'm going to reach for hands. Reach for hands. And then we're going to take a lift off. You're going to lift your chest. Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to let go. Yes. We are flying. Wow, and I think this is a great time for us to go over to Matt, whose musical guest, Sue Medley, is waiting for him. Absolutely. So I guess I'll probably uh, stop taking the old photos of you there for a little bit of uh, nice, nicely job. Now, unfortunately, Michael, I am disappointed you didn't follow through with the thread of wearing the yoga pants. So that we were hoping for, or the promise, the way it works. Anyhow, back to the music. You are watching the show on Shock TV, and I'm very incredibly happy to be here with the musical guest, Sue Medley, uh, Juno Award winner from the Comox Valley. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I was actually born in Nanaimo. Born in Nanaimo. Yeah, hey, can right. I make some noise for Nanaimo? That's Come right. on. Yeah. Welcome. That's right. <laughs> So you know, all sorts of great island connections. Yeah, so absolutely. now uh, I want to get a little bit into later on the interview against some of the travels you've done. But obviously with any career of any kind, music or otherwise, it starts with either that moment, that song, that inspiration. So what, what was that moment, instrument, song that's, that said to you, all right, music's what I was meant to do? Oh, well, I think growing up initially it was, uh, it was the band Heart. And it was Joni Mitchell as well. There weren't a lot of female artists out at that time. But if you want to really go back to when I was little, it was Elvis Presley. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do impersonations, and I did the whole gyration thing for my older sisters. But uh, so that, that was the first one. Could you give us a small vocal impersonation right now? Uh, no, no, definitely okay. not. <laughs> well, I ain't nothing but a hound dog, so. I'll All thank right. very much. Oh, well. <laughs> there we go. Um, with that too, now also starting music uh, in in the Comox Valley. Mm -hmm. I read you uh, started your first band or was in your first band at 16 with a band called Punch. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, experience. that's right. I, I remember. I know all the guys still. They were all, nice. you know, about 10 years older than I was, and I had just turned 16. And uh, they were incredible and still are musicians. So I went for my audition. I auditioned with the Heart song. I auditioned with uh, Heartless, and then uh, got the gig. And uh, it was the best experience because there I was, my first band, and these incredible musicians. So it, it was like we were doing Steely Dan and, and Allman Brothers and all these different kinds of genre, Bonnie Raitt. So at a very young age, I was really lucky to, to you know, get started in a real good way. And then from that, I mean, your musical resume is, is I mean, it's outstanding, uh, especially from the ratio of anyone coming from the island. So to go from like that, but then also play like on, on your albums uh, in the early 90s, playing with members of John Hyatt's band, John Cougar Mellencamp's band. Uh, talk a bit about those musicians and sort of going from the island of Vancouver into playing with these giants in North America. Yeah, and again, it was, uh, it, it all happened pretty fast once I got my record deal. Uh, the, the wheels started to turn and, and quickly, so I actually I flew down to uh, New Orleans and I met with the Goners, which was John Hyatt's band at the time, with Sonny Land with on Sly Guitar, who's extraordinary, um, and then ended up recording at John Mellencamp's studio for both of the records with Polygram. Um, used some of their guys, John Mellencamp's uh, guitar player co-produced with me as well. And once again, it was just things just I kept landing in these great spots with, you know, very talented people. Absolutely. All right, now we're going to get to the music here real, real quick, uh, but just uh, sort of on that, tell us about the band you're with right now and where can people uh, hear you play and get your music. Yep, so this last year we've put together uh, it's Sue Medley in the Back Road Band, and we have Jeff Gillespie here on guitars and uh, vocals in the band, and he's uh, coming to join me tonight, which is great. So we re recorded a new CD this past year um, called These Are the Days with the, the back row band and it was a whole you know the whole band was involved with it and John May our keyboard player co-produced it with myself we re recorded at Dove Creek Studios in the Valley uh, Paul Kimes uh, studio so I was just it was so great to finally get something new out absolutely beautiful all right now folks can see you play uh, coming up December 12th at the Queens in the Nanaimo yes. uh, December 13th at the Crofton Hotel and again uh, these are the days uh, the new album and I guess that's the song right here now these are the days what's, what's right. the song about it's uh, these are the days are just going okay I came full circle 
and I've landed back into my roots where I started, and life is good. Beautiful. All right. Sue Medley, Jeff Gillespie, these are the days. It's the show here on Shaw TV. These are the days you can breathe at last. These are the days, no turning back. These are the times, don't let slip away. When the shadows fall, the night has come. Counting dreams, one by one. Tomorrow, after all the tears and sorrow, and these are the days you can breathe at last. These are the days, no turn back. These are the times, don't let slip away. And these are the words of your spoken past. These are the tears shed. Left unturned, and count each step a lesson learned, a straight up arrow to the moon. With the hope of tomorrow, after all the tears and the sorrow, and these are the days you can breathe at last. Turning back, these are the times. Don't let slip away. And these are the words of your spoken past. These are the tears shed at last. These are the days. Life is kind. Life is cruel. Sometimes heroes. Sometimes. Every day comes down two minutes And after all right now we're in it Right here, right now Yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah and These are the days you can breathe at last These are the days no turning back These are the times don't let slip away. These are the words of your spoken past. These are the tears shed at last. These are the days. And these are the days. All right, Sue Medley, everybody. That was awesome. But now it's time for a different kind of entertainment. It's time for another magic moment right here on the show. And I have my good friend. I made this pizza Matt. disappear. <laughs> here, back with us again. We're going to do a little uh, thing here with you, Matt. I have a deck of playing cards. And uh, I just want you to be here, a witness, just to make sure that everything's copacetic and, uh, and uh, everything happens the way that they see it on television. All right, we're going to use a bunch of cards. We're going to use the strongest cards in the deck. I have. Uh, Four aces here that we're going to use, Matt. Nice. Nice, huh? Very, very good. And we need a few other cards. I have these three. The ace of spades we're going to leave right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take three cards and put them in a pile here. Fair? Yep. So far, so good. Three cards, put them in a pile here. Fair? Yep. Three cards, put them in a pile here. Fair? Consistent, yep. Consistent. And then three more. And we'll put them there. Fair? Yep, absolutely. Awesome. So we have our aces left. I'm going to put those in my pocket. We don't even need them anymore. Now I want you to watch this really, really close because we're going to play a little bit of a game. It's kind of a follow the leader type of thing with these cards. Now I'm going to take this ace of spades. It's the leader. We're going to leave it right there. I want you to watch it at all times. Make sure I don't touch that pile. Okay. All right. Start over here. We'll start off with the ace of diamonds. We have three in different cards and the ace of diamonds. 
I want you to watch it really, really close. You're going to watch it right to the very last second, okay? okay? Watch that ace really close. Here we go, Matt. There's number one. There's number two. So far, so good. One last look at that ace, okay? Here's number three. Now watch this. You're not going to believe this because if we take a good look, <laughs> you don't <almost laughs> swear that that ace is gone. That's right. One, two, three, four. I know. Pretty weird. We'll try that again. <laughs> sleeves are back you don't have sleeves. Yeah, yeah. in my hand. <laughs> We have three in different cards and the ace of clubs, okay? Yep. This time we'll do it a little different for you. We'll take the ace, we'll turn it upside down. You can keep your eye on it. Okay. Watch this really close, Matt. Here we go. There's number one. Mm -hmm. There's number two. Yep. There's number three. Mm -hmm. No funny business. Ready? <laughs> There's number four. <laughs> what? That's right. So look, no aces here. One last ace left. <laughs> We have three in different cards once again, and an ace. We're gonna put it I'm in the middle like that. I'm We're gonna leave it, it face up. Now watch this. All I do is snap my fingers and give it a turn. That's it. Did you see it go? Yeah. There's number one, there's number two, there's number three, there's number four. One. I know, let's look at them again. There's number one, number two, <laughs> number three, and number four. <laughs> That's pretty slow. No funny business there. So you wow. can see none of the aces are here. Remember that ace of spades? Yeah, yeah, it should be in there. There's number one. Yeah, yeah. There's number two. <laughs> There's number three. What? And that's... <laughs> that's the magic moment for tonight. Right on, man. round of applause, wow. Michael Thanks, Paris. buddy. Thank you so much. I don't know how he does it. Michael Barron's Magic Moment. Thank you so much for being on the show. Great stuff. Wow, amazing. And again, you are watching the show right here on Shaw TV. We're about halfway through the program. Uh, so far, uh, we've had some great stuff from a Canada World View. Some dance, some more dance coming up later. Uh, we're gonna find out, uh, we also found out how to contribute to the Great Nimo Toy Drive. Very worthwhile stuff there. Uh, Michael learned about some yoga and getting his, uh, getting his groove on there with Omtown Yoga. And as we did see that, uh, for Michael to do yoga, that is a bit of a stretch. A little bit of a stretch there, that one. All right. And of course, we also met our musical guests, Sue Medley, Jeff in there as well, and also Anna learned about henna art. And we're going to have some more music from Sue as well, and Anna's also going to be back to look at that particular style of art called henna. And in particular, I think they're going to talk about a style of henna art from the, uh, the Midwestern United States called henna Montana. So henna Montana there. What do you mean, boo? That was a mildly sought-after joke. All right, anyway, so anyway, she and Ava, we do, Charlotte's trying to hold it together. Ava will be doing some more work with Hannah Art with that. And we'll also find out again, Hip Hop's Toys for Tots, which is again a great food, gift, clothes, and good cheer raiser that can be on December 13th. We're also going to, again, go back to the folks with Canada World Youth and uh, see maybe another bit of a dance and music uh, presentation they got for us. Very, very cool stuff. But right now, as much as I'm conducting things on the set, I want to send it up to someone over in the Alberni Valley who knows a little bit about conducting a train, and they'll be speaking with our own superconductor, Anna Bosa. So Anna, over to you. That's right, I'm a superconductor and it is my pleasure to introduce Neil Melbon from the McLean Mill National Historic Site. <laughs> Welcome, Neil. Thank you. And Christmas is so much fun. One thing that I love about Christmas is the lights. There's, so there's a few things that are happening at the mill. Uh, and one of them is the steam train. So can you tell us a little bit about that? So we have a 1929 Baldwin steam locomotive cool. and it takes a half an hour to run out to the McLean Mill National Historic Site. And so it's a great way to travel and see the festival of Christmas lights in our craft fair. Now, uh, so where would you take the train? You would start? Uh, downtown Portalburn, right at the ENN train station. And, okay. uh, and then you can just hop onto the train there and head out to the mill. And so the mill is where the, the festival is? Yeah, that's correct. It's okay. about 15 minutes by car or six miles by train. I'd rather go by train. Yeah, most people <laughs> do. It's the popular way of getting there. Okay, so when you're, you're at the mill site, tell us a little bit about the Festival of Christmas Lights. So, um, and when is it? So the, it's uh, December the 6th and the 7th, and then yeah. the following weekend, the 12th, 13th, and 14th. And what we have with the National Historic Site, we have a number of historical uh, buildings buildings that we decorate up at Christmas with lights, uh, nice. put crafters inside them, and it's just a great family outing. That's a lot of fun, actually. Oh, it's now, super. the mill, it is a working mill, correct? That's correct, yeah. It's uh, built in 1929, ran for 40 years, and is still an operational steam sawmill. 
<laughs> That's awesome. Now, um, so the craft fair will be there as well, correct? Yeah, we're going to have okay. about 20, 25 different uh, crafters and artisans out there um, in the main visitor uh, center as well as the buildings on site. Now, not only can you take a train, a steam train ride, but there's also a Santa ride. Is that right? So they're two separate yeah, train we have rides. Yeah, we have a number of a different train, train, train uh, <laughs> options there, and the Santa train is on the December the sixth and the seventh, and it's a half-hour train ride just on the waterfront, and you get a chance to interact with Santa, tell him what you need for Christmas, what you want for Christmas, and uh, it's a great family outing, and that usually sells out. That's a very popular run with us. It would be. I. I <laughs> I would love that. Now, the mill is pretty special because it not only has like a Christmas festivities, it also has some summertime activities. Yeah, is during that right? the, yeah, we're a seasonal operation and uh, primarily July and August, and uh, a lot of different uh, special events. Uh, the Beaufort Gang train robbery, the bad guys rob the train on a regular event. Uh, well, they're very um, punctual, let's put it that way. Um, also, we have pirate train, uh, antique uh, shows, uh, steam shows, and all sorts of different activities. Just about every weekend has an activity. Now, so these are separate activities. Can you, can you, I know, um, can you actually have like a birthday party and have, yeah, you can have birthday your parties. own pirate train ride? Uh, you could, yeah. And um, <laughs> we have weddings out there. We've had weddings out there. Uh, very photographic out there at the mill with all the old buildings and the train and all that. So there's lots of different special events that take place out there. Yeah. That is really great because I'd, I've never been. I've always really, really wanted to go on a steam train ride. I'm hoping this Christmas that we will come out there. Because Hopefully we have the pleasure of your company. <laughs> <laughs> I really I think it would be really great. Yeah. Neil, thank you so much. Now, you, there's also a website, right? Yeah, albernyheritage.com. Excellent. So we can find out more information mm -hmm. about all these wonderful festivities. Yeah. Thank you so much. And now we are going to go back to Sue Medley and Sue is going to be singing My Town. What a beautiful sight, what a beautiful morning I'm wrapped in a blanket, wearing what I was born in They're starting their engines, and the grass is getting longer And I'm thinking that maybe I'll stay until September is beautiful as rain every minute turns to hours into memories that stay forever green forever young this is a place i love this is my town there's a parade on the weekend and the whole town will be there Umbrellas and lunches they packed and folding chairs and the band will start playing and balloons will start to rise and the old folks will head back home to a simple life oh friends are Oh. 
smoke and a play cigarette She don't give a damn She don't care What hasn't happened yet She's forever green Forever young This is the place she's from And the days are getting shorter And the leaves turn without warning I'm stuck between right now and getting older My tears are shed in silence I'm stuck, stuck inside myself My bags are packed with long goodbyes I'll be leaving in the morning This is my town. That was my town with Sue Medley. I have with me here Tyler Barnes, also known as Jinx, and he's involved in a great event that's coming up and it's called Hip Hop's Toys for the Tots. Tyler. Can you tell me a little bit about what's happening? Uh, yeah, I've uh, organized a little hip hop show. Um, we've got a bunch of uh, local artists uh, lined up. We're going to throw a little hip hop fundraiser together, raise some funds for uh, families in need for the holidays. Now, Yen, as you told me, it's involved with both the Salvation Army, the Loaves and Fishes, which actually put together Hamperville. Yeah, Hamperville, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's happening that night? It's on December 13th at yeah. the Canby. What's yeah. going on? Uh, December 13th at the Canby, yeah, we got, um, I got myself, I'll be doing performance, uh, as well as local artists, uh, Courtesy and Scholastic. Um, DJ Allgood will be spinning all night, and I uh, got uh, a comedy act by a uh, local comedian, Malcolm Wright, and a, uh, a bunch of uh, surprise guest performances as well, so. Good, I understand there's also a raffle and silent auction items throughout the night. All right. All those proceeds to help needy families during Christmas For right sure. here in the Nanaimo. Yeah, yeah. Good. I, I also talked to the ladies for, from the Great Nanaimo Toy Drive. I understand you're collecting toys that night as well. Yeah, yeah. Collecting everything from food to clothes to toys and cash, whatever. And, and the toys that get collected get routed through Hamperville right to the toy drive. So it's all going to needy families right here in Nanaimo. Now, if people uh, want to know more about this event, which is happening on December 13th, they should contact the Canby directly? Yeah, they can contact the Canby or they can uh, check it out on Facebook, just Hip Hop's Toys for the Tots. Um, all the information will there. Uh, I have my, uh, my contact information as well, so. Good, yeah. good. What brought you to have to want to get involved in this project? What um, I mean, I, I'm a struggling person as well. I mean, it's just kind of uh, just, you know, helping support the community. And uh, yeah, I mean, just that's just the way I am, right? So. Did you have any trouble getting people to, to join in on this event? No, not at all. It actually went pretty smoothly. So, And these are all guys that are locally in town. Yep. It's really part of, and this is something that's a little different. We certainly ha see adults and older adults get involved, but this is the youth of the Nanaimo getting yeah. involved in their own project for Christmas. For sure, yeah. We're, we're just trying to you know pitch in and do our part kind of thing, right? So, yeah. And I'm sure, and this is true of every community, there are those who are needy that are families, but there are also those that are needy, that are young people mm -hmm. trying to make hands meet here in the night. Sure. Yeah, I mean, look at myself right now. So, I mean, yeah, we're all, everybody's, you know, in a rough spot right now. So, whatever helps. Good, good. And again, I want to reiterate, if you look up Hip Hops, Toys for the Tots, right here in the Nanaimo, and uh, it's going to be on don't lose that date, December 13th, December 13th. 9 p.m. at the Canby. The Canby, yeah, downtown Nanaimo. <clears throat> Good. Yep. Well, um, Tyler, that's 
there's nothing more noble than get involved in projects for the needy at Christmas, Christmas time. Mm -hmm. I'd like to thank you for getting involved in this, and we wish you luck on the project. I think it's going to it's going to be the start of I think a long, yeah, I'd ongoing like to, tradition. I'd like here. to see this become an annual thing for sure. So yeah. good. Good. Cool. Now, let's head over to Anna, who's going to do some more Hannah art. Thank you, Brian and Ava. You are spectacular. This Thank is you. so great. Thank you so much. It's really, really great. Now, earlier we were discussing a little bit about henna, and, and while this has been drying, you can see how it's starting to flake off and dry. And just the smell of the henna itself. Yeah. And you were telling me that it's there's essential oils. Yeah, so um, the henna itself, the leaf has its own natural perfume smell. They actually used to use it as a perfume traditionally um, in the Middle East. And they also add essential oils to it, and that's where it gets that's its... That's uh, that lovely smell is. Yeah, exactly. And it doesn't take very long to dry at all. It's already starting to cake off. Yep. And it will eventually get darker and darker. Yep, it'll, like I said, it'll get dark over the next 48 hours. Excellent. Yep. Now, you do some Christmassy kind of things too. I do. You told me with the henna, which is quite interesting. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Basically, you can do henna on anything that it will absorb into. So, I do Christmas cards and candles, and you can do them on wood boxes. And um, Would you do a henna party? Yes. Like a Christmas party? Totally. I actually, at Full Circle Creative, we did a henna party last month. Oh, it you did? Yeah, it was really fun. Yeah. Uh, we Excellent. We had, had a Bollywood theme <gasps> and belly dancer and some drawing, and it was really fun. Oh, and fun. Yeah, we're going to be throwing another one in the spring, and it's just a... And this is on Gabe. On, on Gab Gabriola. On Gabriola, yeah. Yeah. Now, there's so many wonderful artists in the Gabriola community. Can you tell us a little bit more about Gabriola and the, because it is a small community, and Full Circle Creative does the workshops. Yeah. And maybe just elaborate a little bit. <laughs> sure. Um, Gabriola, has, Gabriola has a really good uh, community for artists. You have a lot of support and a lot of variety. And um, the reason why we opened up Full Circle Creative is um, for people like myself and Aaron, we're artists without a studio. So we want, I'm sure we're not the only ones on Gabriola that doesn't have their own studio. So and not only Gabriola. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all over. So we wanted to have a space where people can come and be creative and, and have do their a thing. community collective sort of space to do that. Awesome. So, yeah. That's really great. Now, how, how long have you been doing, like, art? Because uh, oh, you do man. some paintings as well. It's really wonderful. Pretty much since I could pick up a crayon, I was doodling on something. <laughs> but it just kind of blossomed into paintings. I do portraits and um, landscapes. And and Ava's work is on Full Circle Creative's website, which is, uh, I'll let you say it. Sure, fullcirclecreative.co. <laughs> Um, I also have some of my personal artwork on retrofunkart.com. Excellent. Yeah. That is so great. I'm loving it. And thank you so much for being on our show. Thank it's you. wonderful. Yeah. And now we are going back to our wonderful performers. And Lewis, I believe, here they come. Look at This is great. And they're going to be doing another performance for us. The Canada World Youth. Hi. I'm Arif and this is my friend Alexi. We are from Canada World Youth. We want to perform a dance from my province, Aceh, Indonesia. So the dance is about um, living in harmony and living in togetherness. So enjoy the show. Up! Hello, 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 hello,
Gentlemen, Canada World Youth, thank you thank so, you. so much for getting here. Please, amazing stuff. Ollie, I'm running thank up and down the line. Amazing stuff. Thank you, thank thank you. you. as well. To everyone thank, here. You. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> to, ev to everyone here in the line, and also to all the folks back up there, also down, uh, Adit and Simon as well, for instance, and Lewis for setting this uh, segment up. Thank you guys very, very much. Please, another big round of applause <laughs> for this stuff. Uh, it's... No, I mean, it's, it's one of those things we often think about trying other cultures, you know, for food or maybe a holiday, but to learn dance, to learn music, to learn different traditions, uh, so valuable. So thank you guys very much again for being here. Uh, an amazing part of the show. Wow. And we're coming up close to it again. And um, really, as mentioned, such a, such a valuable thing to be valuing other cultures. And so a big thanks again to Canada World Youth for being here to expand yourself and all the projects you truly uh, believe in. You know, definitely stroke to uh, Peru is your next list of accomplishments. And, uh, and doors will be open anytime you want to drop by unless it gets so chilly out that you can see my Nepal. So, oh man, well, there's no Norway that's going to happen. All right, so anyways, oh, by the way, you might want to get for your next spokesperson. I recommend uh, Cuba Gooding Jr., though I hear he's actually got a new job at that um, credit union in the mall called the, the Czech Republic. All right, so, oh, by the way, here's a joke for you. Uh, what do you get uh, when you find a bloodsucker in your beer mug? Well, that's uh, Liechtenstein. All right, Liechtenstein. All right, speaking of food and drink, maybe you want to try a different sort of ethnic meal for Christmas, for instance, instead of having like some turkey with grease, maybe a Malta Bahama split with a cup of hay tea. All right, a, a cup of hay tea. Go see, Raymond got that one. All right, now, uh, Sudan Lee, you think this uh, can't go much further, but just Q8. Just Q8. All right, we need to get back to the music here quickly because I know you want less taco, more Rocco, especially with a really nice acoustic guitar. Uh, so uh, we're rushing to go to the end of the show, and unless I, unless I ran away, they're going to be uh, booting me out the door. Uh, can you believe it? No, no, no. Uh, no, you're gone to be kidding me, right? So anyway, so I'm, I'm really Saudi for all this. Uh, so before I tie one on and uh, Singapore excuse for a goodbye song, I want to say, say, oh, I get stuff thrown at me here. <laughs> probably, probably well deserved. I want to say thanks so much to all of our guests, all of our hosts, volunteers, staff uh, behind the cameras and in front of the scenes, of course. I want to thank to Milano's for that pizza I made disappear. And in fact, all the staff made disappear. Thank you so much for feeding our hungry crew. And hey, you can find uh, information on the show on Facebook now, facebook.com slash the show on Shaw. You know, it's funny 
information on us on the Shaw uh, Central Vancouver Island's Twitter page as well. And hey, you can also find uh, previous episodes of the show there or on our YouTube page. So again, just search up the, the uh, Shaw TV Nanaimo Central Vancouver Island YouTube page and see more great jokes and more great stories. And hey, actually speaking of stories, if you have a great story idea, uh, you know someone that should be featured here on the show, just drop a line to our executive producer, Melissa Hall. Her contact is melissa.hall at sjrb.ca. Again, we love to hear from people, stories, personalities here in Central Vancouver Island. All right, <laughs> Todd's trying to get his family on the show now. All right, to finish off, we're not going to have Todd's family on the show. We're going to have one more song from Sue Medley and Jeff Gillespie. The track is called High Time, so let's enjoy it. And thank you so much for watching the show right here on Shaw TV. Today I'm going to hang up this old hat on the shelf. Today I'm going to be like everybody else. Today I'm going to leave. My troubles all behind Forget about the things that don't matter Another time And today I'm gonna wipe off all that writing on the wall Draw myself a road map To where the chips may fall Today I'll say so long To old and bitter ways and break the chains that keep me from living for the day. I don't need to even the score anymore. I'm waking up and walking out that door. I don't need to question what it is I'm here for. It's high time. I laugh in the rain, well high time, I feel this way, I stumble, I've fallen, I've held my breath, been stalling, I've been skating on a frozen landslide for too long. Hope lies in the twists and turns, fade a glow of the afterburn. Ooh, hold on. When it feels like you just can't find a friend, and it seems like your heart will never mend, don't give up. Don't give in, you don't have to walk this way again. It's high time, I laugh in the rain. High time, I feel this way. I've stumbled, I've fallen, I've held my breath, been stalling, I've been skating on a frozen land. Line for too long. It's high time, I laugh in the rain, high time, I feel this way, I've stumbled, I've fallen, I've held my breath, been stalling, I've been skating on a frozen landslide for two